Hey folks, today's video is going to be an app pick and boy what an app pick it is. Today I'm going to be talking about Simple Screen Recorder, a, um, an application available in most distribution repositories it seems, or certainly many of the major distributions. It allows you to record the entirety or portions of your screen and it is an application I've used in countless videos on this channel before. Now full disclosure, I'm using OBS Studio uh, to record today's video so that I can actually demonstrate Simple Screen Recorder. Recorder. Uh, both of them I really quite like, but OBS is a little bit more advanced, and if I want something that I can sort of rely on and that I know works, Simple Screen Recorder has always had my back, and it's something that I've used for years upon years upon years. I've done the majority of my screen cap videos using that um, because it allows me just to record the screen, it allows me to record the microphone input with it as well. And then I'll just do uh, the sort of the personal visuals using this camera over here, and then I'll mix it all together in Caden Live. Um, it's wonderfully simple, and um, I thought I might just give you a bit of a, a behind the scenes look as to my workflow, uh, at least in a very small regard here. If you'd like to see other videos like it, then please feel free to let me know down in the comments section below. And just before I crack on with the visual part, don't forget that I've got a new gaming channel, and uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitch as well. I'm doing a little bit more gaming and live streaming stuff over there, as not to clutter up your subscription feeds uh, with this channel. So yeah, if you, if you guys are fond of my gaming slash live streaming content, check me out on Twitch and check out the link to the new gaming channel down in the description. So, as you can see here, I've got it all set up. And just before we actually get into the uh, the mechanics of it, uh, this is the website for it. I'll, of course, link to it down in the description as well. Uh, and it shows you how you can put it all together. Uh, it is GPL version 3, so you can actually take the source code and compile it yourself if you feel so inclined. But if you go to the download section, you'll see that it's available in most of the major distributions or um, all of the distributions that other distributions are often based on. So, uh, but yeah, like for example, in, in Linux Mint, I know that it's not listed. Oh no, it is, it's listed here, uh, but it is available just in the native repositories. I'm using the native repository version uh, here on Manjaro in XFCE. Um, I remember that there was a time when you had to add in a PPA for the Ubuntu uh, you know, for the Ubuntu build, but um, it's been around for such a while now that it's made its way into most repositories. And it is, it's a wonderful, very straightforward, very simple piece of kit that actually allows you to fully customize how you're recording your desktop. So as you can see here, I've got two windows open. I've got the simple screen recorder uh, window itself, and then I've got my videos folder. This is just where all the video files will be sent to, and I've got it here for a bit of reference. So uh, basically it just asks us a few questions as to how we want to record our desktop, and then it gets to recording. So if we go uh, click continue here, it'll ask us uh, you know video input questions and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we can record the whole entire screen and uh, we, if you are using multiple monitors this is where you select which monitor you wish to record either all screens or screen one doesn't matter for us we can also record a fixed rectangle as well so we can select a rectangle we can record a rectangle here and we can also select windows so we can just uh, click the select window button and then just click the window where it uh, distinctively applies to we can also use numeric values to plan out where our uh, recordings should happen as well so it's got uh, coordinates from the left uh, top and then it's got width and height as well now an interesting mechanic about how you do the window select is as you can see here through the area that is selected to record you'll notice that the file edit view go buttons they're all selected but the title bar above it is not so it's recording all of the the contents within the window now if you wanted to record the window border as well you can collect uh, you can click the select window but, uh, button and then you can click the title bar at the top where it says videos file manager you can't really see it too well here because the crosshair just blends in with the uh, the color of the gray and then you can see here that it's uh record it's going to record in the in it's going to include the window border when it's recording it's a small little touch but it's a nice little mechanic that makes it quite easy and straightforward to know what you're recording when you're recording it and of course just select one of the nu numerical values here to see where exactly or what parts of your screen are being recorded but for the rest of this demonstration we'll just record the entire screen because that were uh, because why not um okay so 
uh, beneath we can check the frame rate as well. Uh, this depends. You really only need something other than 25 um, if you are recording gameplay, in my humble opinion. If you're just doing a screen cap where you're demonstrating what I'm demonstrating, this video, for example, is going to be uh, 25 frames per second. Um, and it gives you enough smoothness with the mouse, with the uh, with, with everything else that you tend to need that you don't need anything faster. You can raise it up to 60, but of course that comes with a, uh, a CPU overhead of, you know, with system resources. So, uh, and, and because recording uh, your computer screen, because recording your desktop is actually a reasonably intensive process, either with the CPU or with the GPU, then you probably do want to, you know, be cautious of, uh, of your system resources. You can also scale a video. You can actually make it bigger or smaller. Um, and you can actually make it so that it fits within, you know, 480 by uh, 8, uh, 854 or something like that. So you can actually change the resolution or you can change the scaling of it. Uh, usually this is something that I do in post. Very few uh, screen recording sessions that I do here will ever go straight out into publication. I'll edit them in, in usually Caden Live first or something to that effect. And then this is the audio input. Now you can only include one audio source. If I could think of one way to make this program better, it would be to record a, a second audio source. That way you could record sounds from the desktop as well as sounds from the microphone. However, uh, you have to, if you're using the backend Pulse Audio, uh, you have to select. So I can select either my desktop uh, sounds, so all the sounds that are being played through my desktop, or I have to select my current microphone in which to use. Now, in some ways, this is a benefit because it means that uh, if there is notifications dinging away in the background of my desktop, it means that it isn't coming through on a recording, which is quite good. It means that I know that what I say into the microphone is explicitly what's being picked up. However, that means that if I do want to uh, record desktop audio, that means I have to record it using something like, uh, I could use like this uh, Handy H H4 here as an external recording source, so I've got that here, uh, or some kind of you know additional microphone, and then I have to match it up, which generally speaking is not the easiest thing to do, and, and maybe that's, if I wanted to do that all in one, that might be where I'd look at OBS for, uh, for the more advanced features, but if I want to do a simple screen recording, uh, if I want to do a simple tutorial, I could, I could do this very video using Simple Screen Recorder. So uh, you've got all that there. So this is a pretty standard set of uh, st uh, settings. Microphone in and uh, 25 frame rate recording the whole screen. And of course, uh, you want to record, well, it's up to you as to whether or not you want to record the cursor. Uh, in the overwhelming majority of cases, uh, yes, unless it's something referential that would only be distracted by a cursor, cursor moving over it. Um, generally speaking, you tend to want to include the cursor. It just it just makes it a little bit, the, the, it presents a degree of continuity when stuff's happening on screen. So uh, we now uh, look to our output. So as you can see, our file is being saved in the home Circe videos ssr.mkv. So I'm using mkv. It's an open format uh, that allows you to use all kinds of codecs with it. It's very useful in my humble experience. And uh, as you can see, that uh, location where the file is being saved is identical to the one where our video window is right there. So yeah, I'm using the Mercosia MKV file format. You can use others. You can use MP4, WebM, uh, OGG, all that kind of stuff. But MKV, in my opinion, is the most versatile. You can use it in the most you know most different circumstances. Video codec. Now you do have an option. You have VP, uh, VP8, which is uh, I believe a free format. I'm not familiar with Sierra, but I think it's a free format. And then you've got H.264, which is a very standard MP4 codec, not free, but it does use the least amount of system resources, I, th I think, out of those lot. It uses less than VP8, and I know that for certain. So uh, if you want a, the smoothest possible experience and you don't mind going proprietary, check out um, uh, H.264, because that's MP3, uh, MP4. But if you want um, something free, then there's VP8 as an option there. I've tried both. Both actually work, so that's fine. Now, a constant rate factor. So this changes the video quality. A lower value means a higher quality. So this basically um, uh, shows how much your, your, your video is, is ultimately going to be compressed in that regard. Um, 
Generally speaking, I don't compress this at all. So I just keep the uh, the, co uh, the constant rate factor at one. You get very large file sizes as a result of that. But usually anything that I produce using Simple Screen Recorder um, is then going to be processed in, in a video editor of some sorts anyway. And then I can feel free to either convert or delete the source file. So I tend to keep a very low constant rate factor because I'm recording for the highest possible quality and then I'm working down from there. And that's generally the rule I, I I make um, and often I'll find if I go back to um, recording the entire screen often that makes a lot more sense and then I can crop it in post um, just so that I've got more information there than I might necessarily have so uh, going back to this screen here output profile save it as the MKV we've got uh, video codecs we got the so we've got a very very high quality um, but high file size um, constant rate factor here of one uh, we can allow frame skipping, so I'll just read it here. If checked, the video will allow um, to skip frames if the input frame rate is lower than the output frame rate. If not checked, input frame rate input frames will be duplicated to fill the holes. This increase, increases the file size and CPU usage, but reduces the latency for live streams. Uh, in some case, uh, in some cases, it shouldn't affect the appearance of the video. Uh, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, if you're skipping frames, you're um, in trouble in a bigger way. It means you, maybe you're not using a fast enough computer for the job, or maybe there is something draining system resources or something to that effect. Uh, okay, so uh, in terms of audio, this uh, really comes to, um, down to a matter of pre uh, preference. Uh, a matter of preference. You can use Vorbis if you want to be free. You can use MP3, which is a, br a broadly free file type now as well. You can use AAC, which is often used in a lot of MP4 files that you see. Uh, I personally just choose uncompressed. It's a larger file size, but it doesn't use any of the compression. C you know, it doesn't take, take any CPU resources away for compressing the sound, for example. And uh, it gives you, you know, the highest possible quality with the equipment um, that you've got there and then. So as you can see, I treat Simple Screen Recorder very similar to how I might treat Fraps. I don't know if you're familiar with Fraps on Windows. Um, it, it was what I was looking to or looking for an alternative to uh, when moving over to Linux. And I've been rather loyal to this program ever since. So we can go to the recording screen here. We just click uh, back and well, we just clicked. We just click continue to that. But we can click back and uh, and continue uh, as at our leisure to change all of the various settings we want until we're happy with them. So here we are. Uh, if we click continue enough times, we go to the simple screen recorder recording screen. Now, uh, this is all quite uh, straightforward. Uh, you can click this button here to start recording. We might as well. And as you can see, it's already start started writing to a file. Uh, and I have also selected it to uh, use today's date and time as markers as well. So there's that. OK, you can also see here that there is a preview window that shows you uh, exactly where you are recording. And that's pretty good. You can even see the cursor there. I'm not entirely sure if you'll be able to see it on uh, in your video, but, um, but I can here. Uh, you can see the frames per second in, the frames per second out, the total time of recording, uh, the size in, size out. So it would be the, the size in, size out would be different depending on whether or not you are using um, the scaling. Uh, you've got the file name there. You've got the file size so far, and then you've got the bit rate there. Now, the file size will depend on a whole number of factors, including uh, how much movement of things there are on the screen. So um, that's always a difficult one to try and measure. But um, but there you go. Uh, and also, what you can do is you can pause the recording. You can start the recording. You can stop the preview. Um, it uh, previews at uh, 10 frames per second unless otherwise mentioned. And it does say that it gives you um, uh, it can give you some kind of some additional CPU usage. You may also know that since we paused and resumed recording, it's actually uh, opened us into a second file, which is pretty good. Um, in fact, what you can do is uh, you can save recording, which is basically stopping is the stop button. Um, uh, you can um, select uh, there it is. Separate file per segment. So if you didn't want a separate file every time you paused the recording, uh, you can unselect that. But uh, other than that, yeah, like it's a really uh, easy, straightforward piece of kit. Those are the settings that I use when recording, but they are high performance settings uh, for high, high file size files um, so that I can then edit later on. But um, 
And you don't have to click pause to save the final file, or you or you can if you want to save recording, and then it all uh, all wraps up there for you rather nicely. So um, yeah, here's the website once again. I'll make sure to uh, leave a link to it down in the description below. Um, yeah, if you're looking for a simple way to record your screen or part of a screen, it actually um, it, this is something that I can highly recommend. If you're looking to do something like maybe with um, small, uh, you know, WebM files or things like that, it's really good for that kind of thing as well. It can do a lot with uh, file size compression, uh, which I haven't really gone into in too much detail because it's not something that I use um, to a great extent, but I have used it in the past and I can vouch for um, the quality of, of all of the um, the choices that you get there as well. I can I can save something successfully as a WebM, I can save it as an MP4, I can save it as an MKV. So it's, um, it's really good and it's reliable and... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a simple screen recorder that does uh, the job and does the job rather well. So I think that's about it from me today, but thank you very much for watching. Um, I apologize if the lighting has changed throughout this video, but the sun has actually just been setting as I've been doing this video. Anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.